Hello, my name is Mitch with Robocut.com. Today I'm going to do a run through with Mach 3. Mach 3 is pre installed on our Robocut systems and uh, it's installed as the demo version. The demo version is uh, actually a, a trial demo, it'll allow you to cut up to 500 lines of G code. Um, so if you're cutting circles and squares, uh, technically you don't need to license Mach 3, but anything beyond that uh, you'll want to license. It's fairly inexpensive. So anyway, uh, this is Mach 3, and the intention of this video is to walk through and show the different uh, pieces that we use. Now, there's a lot of things Mach 3 does, and uh, my philosophy is to keep it as simple as possible. What is the, the shortest path to create a quality part uh, that we need? I don't want to take any shortcuts, but I don't want to you know, go through a lot of process of setup and that may be unnecessary. So what I'm going to show you here today is, is the Mitch method, uh, if you like to put it that way, uh, of Mach 3 operation. Um, so most of what we do is prototyping. So, um, you know, we'll, uh, want to produce a part quickly. Uh, so we'll come to uh, produce a part, come in here, um, and typically on the table what we'll do is just uh, throw a scrap up on the table. It's a four by four table. Um, pretty much anywhere, maybe it's a small scrap, and then uh, we'll pick a point on that scrap to start, uh, which is in our lower left corner, which is uh, zero X and zero Y. Um, so here's Mach 3 window. Here's your DROs. Uh, for X, Y, and Z, I can click zero, zero, zero. And as I just said, uh, normally what I would do is with my keyboard move the uh, the carriage to the point that I want to call zero on my table, on my piece of scrap, and I would zero out to the three DROs, uh, with Z being uh, about um, three sixteenths above the material. It depends on what you're cutting, depends on your torch. Uh, we have a 60 amp plasma cutter on our uh, our main table right now that uh, you know has different settings than if you were using a 40. So you just have to get a feel for that height. Um, that brings up torch height control, which there are features here down here. I'm not going to get into that in this video. Uh, we have developed our own torch height control that uh, operates uh, interfaces with Mach and uh, uses USB connection to a uh, sensor device um, and that's being released soon and there'll be a separate video on that. All right to move on here quickly I'm going to go ahead and file load G code and uh, um, I'm just going to pick one that I have here. Um, here's a mower hub adapter. All right there we go. So this is a part I made um, messing around with some actually uh, electric uh, wheelchair motors and wanted to uh, make a steel plate and you can see the part here it's round it's just an adapter plate so and there's uh, two different bolt patterns there for a mini ATV wheel uh, or a uh, four bolt uh, go-kart type wheel so that's my part I want to cut it I have loaded it into the Mach 3 here's the g-code I'm not going to go into G-code. I am not an expert on G-code. I do know that uh, we have our own post-processor that I, I modified uh, one of the, uh, the Mach 3 Plasma post and just to make it do a few different things that I wanted to do. Um, it, it's a comment in here, so it starts out, again, I'm not going to go into this, but uh, here's your Z-move. Um, one important thing in here, the MO3 in the way in our post, that's torch on, MO5 is torch off. So torch is on, a G to, uh, moves the, uh, with a feed rate, and uh, so that's that's your, your G code. In normal operation, you know, when I started out in this, I didn't even know what all that was, so I just ran files. So you don't have to know what's there. If you, did, if you didn't do the post, it doesn't really matter. Um, so to move on here, we have the file in here. I have moved my uh, torch with my uh, keys. I've zeroed it. Um, I'm looking at it now. Everything's looking good. I'm going to go ahead and click regen. That is just something I get in the habit of. 
zero, zero, zero out the DROs, regen the toolpath. Technically, if you load a file, it regens automatically if you're at zero. But you just hit regen no matter what. Um, it's just a recommendation. So um, I'm ready to go. So uh, I come over here now to my action buttons here. I've got cycle start, hold, and stop. Uh, the way I use it, I use uh, uh, start. I use stop. I'll stop it maybe in the middle. So I'll go ahead and click cycle start. And you'll see now in your uh, preview over here, that it's going out and cutting the holes first. You can see the Z going up and down over here on the right hand side. Uh, it is going, after each cut, it goes up 0.1 inch uh, for clearance. So it, it finishes cutting, the uh, Z takes the torch up, moves over to the next part, uh, plunges in, pierces, and cuts. Uh, all that going on with all these numbers going by, kind of fascinating. All right, so here's your torch on, torch off. I can actually manually do that with my mouse or F5 on your keyboard. So if for some reason you uh, were rerunning over the top of something already cut, you could hit F5 to shut the torch off when it automatically starts. Your feed rate here, I can set the feed rate. If, uh, for example, this is steel, this is right. I put this feed rate in, I believe, when I did the uh, post-processing in Bobcat. So when I generate G code for this part, I set 41, I, uh, if it was aluminum, 8, I'd set between 80 and 100, and that's with a 40 amp. And again, these are all numbers that uh, I find, there's charts and things, but uh, really you just have to get out there and start cutting. Uh, get some scraps, figure out uh, what speeds are best. If you get the right speed, the right air pressure, no water in the air, everything's perfect. It's almost, almost like a water jet using uh, the uh, plasma cutters we use today. All right, I'm rambling on. Uh, it's feed rate. I don't use any of the offsets over here. I don't use any of this other than uh, regen toolpath. I don't use the wizards. Um, torch height control in the base mode. We don't use torch height control. Simple part. I mean, I, have, I throw a scrap out there or even a sheet. Uh, I don't need torch height control to cut parts like this. Uh, now, when you start cutting really thin, you're doing fine artwork. You're cutting thin metals. Uh, torch height control is very important, or obviously if you're cutting corrugated metal of some sort, that would be really important. Um, okay, cycle start, so I've started it, there it goes, I can stop it, I can start it again, I can stop, rewind, okay, let's say it messed up, the torch didn't fire in the middle. I found the easiest way is actually just to rewind at the beginning it's less complicated. There are other ways of doing this you can, uh, in these other buttons. So I'm not going to go into that. I'm just saying rewind it, go to zero. It takes you right back. In general, if you're rerunning, do not regen toolpath. In this case, it's probably not going to hurt because you're in the same zero. It should regen to the same thing. But if you're not sure something's happened, don't regen on a redo. You can. I can hit it here. It's fine. Anyway, so. Uh, then we can start again, cycle starts, and it goes again. So that's basic operation of cutting, really simple. Once you have your G-code files that work, <laughs> then um, uh, uh, they tend to, uh, it's just coming in here and running your files. So the other thing is, when you get started on anything, any new file, highly recommend not turning on your torch. Put the, uh, run the file. Uh, now, if you've been running several and it's it's fine, then that's fine. But you know, when you open a new file, run it dry, run it uh, you know above the table, put it to your zero points, and run it without the torch on. Just make sure everything's running, everything your your gantry is all running correctly. Uh, the file does what you think it does. You know, what if you accidentally put uh, an inch of Z in your accidentally somehow uh, you said the wrong top apart or something? And you would you would jam Z down into the table or or some crazy Y or G movement uh, you didn't anticipate or there's an error. So always dry run. I like to unless you're really confident about your files, uh, which at some point you do a bunch of files and your confidence goes up. You don't have to do that anymore. All right. Well, this is Mitch with uh, RoboCut. That was the basic introductory to running Mach 3. The next video will be actually running through Mach 3 settings for uh, the RoboCut. Thank you very much.